Namaste. Welcome to the next video of Machine Learning Techniques course. In this video, we'll study support vector machines. Support vector machine is a supervised machine learning algorithm that can be used for both classification and regression problems. We'll focus on classification aspect of SVM in our course. SVM is a discriminative classifier like perceptron and logistic regression. SVM works in both binary and multi-class classification setups. Following our template, we'll describe all five components of ML setup for SVM one by one. Training data is the first component of our machine learning framework. For SVM, in binary classification setup, training data consists of a feature matrix X with shape N cross M. Note that each example is represented with M features and there are total N examples. The second component of the training setup is label vector and label vector contains labels for N examples and its shape is N. In multi-class and multi-label setups, training data consists of feature matrix with the same specification like a binary setup. However, the label matrix contains one of the K labels for each an example and its shape is N comma K. So in binary setup, we had label vector, whereas in multi-class and multi-label setup, we have label matrix. Model is the second component of our machine learning framework which will be discussed in the context of binary classification setup. So in case of SVM, the output Y is obtained as sine of W transpose X plus B. So Y is the label, X is the feature vector, and this is the linear combination of features which is well familiar to us. W is the weight vector, and B is the bias. So note that here we have written bias unit separately and this is, a, this is a familiar linear classifier to us. Labels are assumed to be plus 1 and minus 1. So what is the learning problem in SVM? The learning problem is to determine the parameters which is the weight vector and the bias. And SVM in general learns a hyperplane separating two classes. So given the training data, we need to find out the best value of W and B that results into the minimum loss. SVM finds a hyperplane in slightly different manner than other classifiers that we have studied so far. So this is an example classification setup with two features, feature 1 and feature 2, and two classes. There are points with blue color, they belong to one class and points with green color belong to the other class. So SVM selects the hyperplane that maximizes the distance to the closest points from both the classes. So this is the hyperplane and these are the closest points to the hyperplane from. So these two points are from blue class and these three points from the green class that are closest to the to the hyperplane. So you want to find the hyperplane that maximizes the margin between two classes. So question is how does it select such a hyperplane? So as usual it uses an appropriate loss function for the objective. So let's learn a few concepts before setting up the loss function. So there are three components here, there is a separating hyperplane, there are two bounding planes and these points are called as support vectors. We will look at these terms one by one. So separating hyperplane is the classifier. It is at equal distance from both the classes and it separates them such that there is a maximum margin between two classes. And this particular part, the distance between these two bounding planes is called as margin. So bounding planes are parallel to the separating hyperplanes. 
and they are on either side they pass through the support vectors and what is support vectors support vectors are subset of training points closer to the separating hyperplane and they influence its position and orientation so if we change the support vectors the position and the orientation of the decision boundary or separating hyperplane will change let's look at the bounding planes the bounding planes are defined as follows the bounding plane on the positive side has the following equation so w transpose x plus b equal to 1 is the equation of the bounding plane on the side of the positive class and w transpose x plus b equal to minus 1 is the equation of the bounding plane on the side of the negative class so only difference is the change of the sign for for this one on the right hand side so we can write them compactly using the label of each example like y into w transpose x plus b equal to 1 so if this y is negative if we apply negative y over here we get 1 on the right hand side so we can write this compactly as y into w transpose x plus b equal to 1. Any point on or above the bounding plane belongs to the positive class. So all the points in the positive class satisfy the following property that is w transpose x plus b is greater than or equal to 1 and, and all the points in the negative class satisfy the following constraint which is w transpose x plus b is less than or equal to minus 1. Again using the same trick as before we can write this compactly as y into w transpose x plus b is greater than or equal to 1 and this constraint is satisfied by all the correctly classified points. So this constraint ensures that none of the points fall within the margin. So they are all the points are outside the margin. Support vectors are points on the bounding planes. All the support vectors satisfy the following equation that is y into w transpose x plus b equal to 1. So in short the product of the label and the linear combination is equal to 1 for the support vectors. So margin is the distance between the projection of x plus and x minus on w. So w is the normal to hyperplane, w is the weight vector, x plus is the support vector on the side of the positive class and x minus is the support vector on the side of the negative class. And this is our separating hyperplane which has equation w x w transpose x plus b equal to 0 and there is another way of writing this in form of a dot product and what you see here is the equation written in form of a dot product which is w dot x plus b equal to 0 so w is the weight vector and x is the feature vector so width of the margin is the projection of x plus minus x minus on unit normal vector which is w by the norm of w and mathematically this can be written as width is the dot product between the difference between the positive and negative support vectors with the unit normal vector so for positive support vectors x plus we have w x plus plus b equal to plus 1 and we can rearrange this so we get the dot product between w and x plus equal to 1 minus b similarly for negative support vectors x minus the dot product between the weight vector w and x minus plus b equal to minus 1 and then this dot product is equal to minus 1 minus b and we arrive at this by rearranging the terms in this equation. 
So now let's calculate width. So width as we know is the projection of the difference between positive and negative support vector and we perform the dot product with the unit normal vector w. So we get this as w, the dot product between w and x plus and w and x minus divided by norm of w. Now we can substitute this particular dot product with 1 minus b and this particular dot product with minus 1 minus b and we have derived this in the previous slide. So now by performing simple algebraic manipulation we get 1 minus b this minus minus becomes plus plus 1 this minus minus becomes plus so it is plus b so 1 minus b plus 1 plus b so b gets cancelled out and we get 2 by the norm of w so the width is equal to 2 by norm of w our objective is to maximize the margin which is equivalent to minimizing one half square of the norm. Therefore, the optimization problem of linear SVM is written as follows. So, minimize half square of the norm with respect to W and B. And as a constraint, so we have to minimize them such that Yi into W transpose Xi plus B is greater than or equal to 1 for all n data points. So this simply says that all data points lie beyond the bounding hyperplanes. So this is called a primer problem and is guaranteed to have a global minimum. Let's solve this problem with an optimization procedure. So here we have written down the primal problem of the SVM again. So this is a quadratic optimization problem. It has got quadratic objective with linear constraints and this can be effectively solved with QCPC which is quadratically constrained quadratic program solvers. Alternatively, we can optimize a dual of the primal problem. For that, we will make use of Lagrange multiplier. With Lagrange multiplier, what we do is we have original objective, we subtract the, the constraint from the original objective. And here, in order to subtract this constraint, we use the Lagrange multiplier, which is alpha i. So the objective becomes half of square of the norm of the weight vector minus sum over all entering examples, alpha i, y i, dot product between the weight vector and x i plus b minus 1, such that alpha i, which is Lagrange multiplier for i training example is greater than or equal to 0 for all i which runs from 1 to n training examples. This is called Lagrangian function of SVM and it is differentiable with respect to w and b. So what we do is we take the partial differentiation of this particular function with respect to w and set it to 0. So we obtain w minus sum over 1 to n alpha i y i x i and we set it to 0 and this gives us w is equal to sum of alpha i y i x i over all n turning examples. And when we differentiate, when we perform the partial differentiation of the objective function with respect to b, we get the sum over all entering example alpha i y i and we set it to 0. So what we get is the sum of alpha i y i for all entering example sums up to 0. So we copy over some important equations from the previous slide. So we have Lagrangian function of SVM and the, the constraint which is alpha i y i sum over that over all training examples is 0 and w equal to the sum over all training examples of alpha i, y i, x i. So substituting these in Lagrangian function of SVM, we get the dual problem. So the dual problem is with respect to alpha which is Lagrange multiplier which is sum over 
alpha i which is Lagrange multiplier for each training example and how did we get it because alpha i y is equal to 0 the first term is 0 and the alpha i into 1 is what we get here so we sum over alpha i over all entering examples in case of w in place of w we substitute this particular equation and that results into minus half of sum over all entering example two times into alpha i alpha k y i y k x i transpose x k so what we do is we write this particular term in form of a dot product which is alpha i y i x i this is one vector and we perform the dot product with alpha k y k x k and here the constraint is that each Lagrange multiplier should be greater than or equal to 0 and the sum of alpha i y i across all training examples should be 0. So here we have all constraints specified in case of in, in terms of the Lagrange multiplier. So this is a concave problem that is maximized using a solver. So we write a dual problem again and note that this problem is easier to solve as it is expressed in terms of Lagrange multiplier alone. And another thing to note is that the dual problem depends on the inner product of the training data. So this is the inner product or dot product of the training data. So strong duality requires Karush, Kun, Tucker or KKT condition alpha i into yi w transpose xi plus b minus 1 equal to 0. So that implies that if alpha i is greater than 0 then yi w transpose xi plus b equal to 1. And these data points for which alpha i is greater than 0 are basically support vectors. And whenever yi into w transpose xi plus b is greater than 1, the distance between the data point and the separating hyperplane is more than the margin. So both primal and dual problems can be solved with optimization solvers to obtain the separating hyperplane for SVMs. This flavor of SVM where classes are linearly separable is called hard margin SVM 